Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In the previous videos, we've built Animal Park Animal Draw. In this video, we will finish up this app. Now we have to work on our line size, our eraser and our colors and we will be done. So let's work on the line size. Now the line size is actually a slider. So let's go back to designer and look at our slider. So our slider, you can see it has, I have a color cyan, my right color, I can make it whatever I want. I have, I'll leave it as a default. Again, the maximum value you want, the minimum value, the minimum value you want is one. The maximum value is whatever we want. So we, we could have had a slider here for dot size, but I wanted to show you how to actually program that without a slider. Let's just say our maximum value over here for line size is 50. I'll leave it at that. The thumb position when we start will be at one. And as we drag it up, we will see this go up. So it'll go from zero, from one to 50. That's the biggest line size that we can make it. Now, as you're dragging, this is going to be 1, 1 1.2, 1.3. We just want whole numbers. So that's going to be something you'll see in a second. So all we have to do is get the current thumb position, which is this is called the thumb, and that's going to be our line size. But we also need to figure out how to draw. Right now, if I click, but if I drag, it's not doing anything. So first, let's figure out how when we drag to draw a line, then we will work with updating the line size, which is this. All right. So very similar. When someone touches the canvas, we drew a circle. When someone drags on the canvas, we want to draw a line. I'm gonna put my dot size over here. That way canvas touched and canvas dragged is close to each other. So I'm gonna go back to canvas, look at my brown event blocks. You can see dragged is the first one. And when someone drags, which is doing this, I want to draw a line. So just like it has draw circle, canvas has a procedure block, which is included called draw line right here. You can also see it says draw shape, draw text. Canvas has a bunch of features. I, I implore it, go explore and see what Canvas really can do. Click on draw line. Let's connect that. Now, here's the thing. We want to draw a line. We have x1, y1, x2, y2. So drawing from the first two points to the second two points. Now look at Canvas drag. It has a starting x, a starting y. It has a previous x, a previous y. It has a current x and a current y. So now we have all these and we have to figure out what's gonna be X1 and Y1, X2 and Y2. I'm gonna give you what X2 and Y2 is gonna be and I'm gonna let you figure out what X1 and Y1 is. X2 is gonna be your current X. Y2 is going to be your current Y. For X1, it might be your starting X or it might be your previous X. For Y1, it might be your starting Y or it might be your previous Y. So I want you to pause the video and I want you to plug these two guys in. And then I want you to drag and test and see what happens. And I want you to pull these two out and drag these two in. Previous X, previous Y, drag, drag around, test it and see what happens. One's gonna give you like a cool fireworks type of effect and one's gonna give you the line that we want. So again, you're gonna start with these two. Your starting X will be X1. Your starting Y will be Y1. Pause the video, go plug these in, see what happens. Unplug these, plug in your previous X and Y, see what happens. <laughs> So now that you've figured out the solution, let's run through this. I'm gonna leave starting X and starting Y here. I'm gonna use my dots. So I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna to drag to this, I'm gonna to drag to this, then I'm gonna to drag to this, and I'm gonna to drag to this. Let's see what happens when I have starting X, starting Y as the X1. So I'm gonna click and drag. So that's not actually a line. I drag straight here, 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 here. This is the fireworks effects I'm talking about. So if you go around, it kind of looks like a firework. And it, it looks cool. But why is it not drawing a line? Resetting. Well, let's think about it. When I click here, this is my starting X and starting Y. If I click here, click here, click here. Let me just 
make my dots again. So this is my starting X and my starting Y. This does not change. So when I drag here to here, my current X and Y, it's gonna make a line from starting to this. So when I come here, you can see it makes that. Now, when I drag to the next line, which is here, this is my starting X. So it's connecting where I currently am with the starting X and Y. So these two are actually not what you want. The same thing, if I'm here and I'd come here, I started at this point and then it's connecting here. So let's pull out starting X. Let's pull out starting Y. Let's put in previous X and previous Y. So let's put my dots back up. So let's do a dot here. I'm gonna go here second, here third, here fourth, and here fifth. This is my starting location. I'm gonna go here, then here, then here, then here, then here. So why is that working? My X1, I'm saying the previous X location. So if I click here, that's my starting. But as I move, it's always connecting my previous. So my previous is before that. So I keep dragging and that's why this works. So now our canvas dragged works. Now let's get our line size to work. Well, when I drag, it's already the minimum. If you come back here, for canvas, you see the line width is two. So our minimum is actually two. So let's actually make it one. So now if I drag, that's a size of one. To update that, we wanna, as this slider drags, we simply wanna update this line width from canvas. This is a property, we can change it using the green blocks. So I'm going to go to my slider, which is right here. You can see position changed. I'm gonna pull this event block out, which is a brown block. This happens anytime someone clicks and drags this. So inside of here, what I want to do is let's add our comment. Number one, I want to update the canvas line width. Number two, I want to update the line size shown to the user. So I want to update the line width. I'm going to go to canvas, scroll down. Here is my line width. And I'm going to get my thumb position. Now it's going to be weird. We want whole numbers, but the slider actually has decimal numbers. We'll fix that in a second, but let's just show you. Reset. Resetting. Right now, look at this thumb position. Resetting. Let's just drag this back down to one. So you can see that's one. Let's drag it up. It's thicker, drag it up, thicker, drag it up, thicker. But here's the issue. This is not updating. Why is this not updating? Remember, we need to update the size shown to the user. Well, earlier, Let's move this around now. Whenever I do my position, my dot size, I added one to the dot size and I called update display. I did the same thing for minus update display. So anytime I wanna update display, we made this procedure, let's add to it too. Let's update the line size shown to the user. And yes, I could go over here to LBL line size. I could pull this in. It's gonna be very similar to this. I can go to join. I can put a text block in here. I can say line size. Then I need to, wait a minute, I don't have a dot size. Well, what are we updating? It is actually the thumb position. But here's a problem. If I click on this and put this here. So I can't pull this thumb size from here because it's a part of position changed. So that's an error. You can see, select divided item from the dropdown. This does not exist outside of this block. So how can we fix that? I'll delete it. Well, so I got thumb position from the slider. So let's go check slider. Click on slider. And if I go down, you can see right here is my slum position. So I'm gonna grab this block out and put it here. So now, anytime I update display, I'm gonna update my dot size. I'm gonna update my line size, no matter what change the user makes. The only other thing I need to do is part two right here. I need to update the line size shown to the user. I'm gonna call procedures, update display to user. So now let's reset and let's test this out. Resetting. Right now you can see that is 48.04. That's one thing that I told you we wanna kinda of get rid of. If I go back down to one, if I, I wanna get rid of these decimals. So I wanna round. Well, rounding comes from the subject over here called math. I'm gonna click on math. And if you scroll down, you should see right here, there is a round block. I'm gonna pull that in. I'm gonna put it both here, position changed. And I'm also going to put it here. 
But you know what? Why am I rounding twice? I'm setting the canvas width, canvas that line width to this position. I don't actually need to call thumb position. Yes, this will work. Let me show you that it does. So when I drag this, you can see now it's only whole numbers, but I don't actually have to use the thumb position. Again, I told you there's a bunch of ways to do it. So actually let's get rid of this. So what else could I put here instead of thumb position? Well, I could put canvas that line with because I'm setting that right property right here. So I can go back to canvas and I can simply get the line with. So if I reset, Resetting. you can see it's still working as I change this. Now, the one issue that we have, remember when we increase our dot size, right? When I click reset, Resetting. it resets my dot size. Currently, it's not resetting my line size. So the last part to this is we want to, I'm gonna make number five, reset line size to one. And number six will now be update the dot size label and line size labels shown to user. So this is in essence six now, but I need to reset my line size. So update the slider to one. So I'm gonna to go to my slider position, thumb position two, pull that out, and we're gonna make it one. So now when I press reset, Resetting. you can see Resetting. it updates my line size. So again, for both of these now, 10, let's drag this up. Let's do this. I click reset. Resetting. It updates. So we're done with drawing and doing dots. So now that we got the meat of it done, what do we have left? Our colors. Right now, I only can do certain colors. Our gallery works, but I want to do some different colors on here. Colors are very, very simple. Let's go back to canvas. Right here is your paint color. So the reason when I click or drag, the default paint color is black. So for all of these images, all we're gonna do is speak the name of the color and also update this paint color. So I'm gonna do this at the very bottom and I'm just gonna drag out all of my images. So I have my button black, button gray, and I'm gonna do button lavender and button peach. So I'm gonna do two of these. And then I'm gonna tell you to pause the video and complete the rest on your own, test it. So for button black, which is already there, let's actually change that to button blue. And what we're gonna do is change the paint color to blue. So I'm gonna to go to canvas, paint color is a property. So I'm gonna come down here to this and I'm gonna come up and we're gonna use this, colors. So I'm going to pull in blue. I also wanna speak. So I'm gonna go down, text to speech. I'm gonna pull in speak. And I'm just gonna say the name of the color. So I'm gonna to go to text, pull in the text box and say blue. Same thing here. I'm gonna to go to canvas. I'm going to change the paint color. I'm gonna change colors. That is gray. So I did this little light gray here. And I'm gonna to go to text to speech. I'm gonna pull in my text to speech and I'm gonna say the color, which is gray. So let's just test these. Let's reset. Resetting. If I do this, it's black. If I touch blue, blue, it said blue, and now it's blue. Let's see if it, it draws. I also did gray, so I click gray. gray. Now you can see it's gray, and I can also draw gray. So very simple to do that. But remember we have two custom colors, so let's think about that. But also, this looks like we're gonna duplicate ourselves a bunch. So why not make one procedure? So let's go to procedures. I'm gonna pull in the blank procedure and we're gonna call it update paint color. Now, I'm gonna need the color I wanna update and also the, the color name. So I need to pass that as inputs to my procedure. This is something you will need to do at the AP Create Performance Task Exam that you will make your own app at the end of this year. So to add inputs, again, anytime you see this little blue settings icon, click on settings, 
here's my input. I'm gonna pull one in for my color and one in for my color name. I'm just gonna click here on it, type color, click here, type color name. And just for consistency, let's add our one, update the canvas paint color, and two, speak the color name. So the things we're doing on here, I just wanna do it one time up here. So I could just pull this up here. I don't want it to be blue. I'm gonna pull this up here, and now I can go back to procedures. I have this block, update paint color. The color, when someone touches blue, is this color. I'm gonna pull this out of there and put it in there. The color name is blue. I have that here. I'm gonna pull that here and put it here. And do the exact same thing. I'm gonna pull this out, update paint color. I'm gonna put gray in here. I'm gonna put color name gray in there. I'm gonna delete these two guys. So I'm doing everything in this one procedure block. Now, paint color, I need to, you see I have an error here. The block needs to be connected to a socket. Okay, so how do I get the paint color? Well, I'm passing it in as input. So here I'm passing in blue, here I'm passing in gray. That becomes this color. I'm just gonna mouse over that. Don't click on it. Clicking on it means you want to rename it. Just mouse over it. I'm gonna pull out Git and connect that to my paint color. Message to speak is the color name. So again, I'm gonna mouse over that. I'm gonna put that there. So now this one procedure is updating based on the color, what I pass in. Let's see if it works before we move on. Resetting. So now, ah, one thing. When I click on reset, it's not resetting the color. So again, you have to always test. Lastly, number seven, reset paint color to black. So I'm gonna go back to canvas, scroll down, I'm gonna find my paint color and I'm gonna make it black. Resetting. So now you can see it's black. And let's test our blue and gray. So gray. Gray. Gray is working. My line is working. Blue. Blue. That is working. And that is working. Resetting. When I reset, it goes back to black. And we are good. Resetting. Now for all the other colors, you're going to do this exact same thing. But let, what about these two custom colors that we did? So I'm going to pull in these. Go back to procedures. The color is going to be a little bit different. So the name is whatever you want to call it. So I called this lavender and I called this peach. So for lavender, let's go back. This is my lavender. The custom color that I selected was this. I'm gonna copy this, come back over here, and it's still set up. If I pasted this in, it would do the same thing. So let's go back to blocks. For my lavender, I want that exact same color. I'm gonna click on colors. I'm going to make a color. Now, it has three blocks here. This is your red, this is your blue, and this is your green. If we go back to color picker for this color, this is the hexadecimal value. But here it has how much red, how much green, and how much blue. So these are your red, green, and blue that matches here, R, G, and B. So I'm going to say 223, 194. So this should be 223. This should be 194 green and 251 blue. So again, this hexadecimal color is 223 red, 194 green, and 251 blue. So let's try our lavender color now. I'm passing this color mixer up here. So again, my black. Now I can draw a line. Here's my lavender. Lavender. There's that same exact color. So let's do peach and then you will finish the rest of the colors and you will be done with this app. Let's go back to designer. Even though I can't see peach here, I can select peach. This was a custom color, I'm gonna select custom. This is the hexadecimal value for the color. We will go over hexadecimal later in this year and binary. Come here and paste it. That's that color that we did. I need these values, 250 red, 234 green, and 201 blue. I'm going to go back. 
I'm going to go to colors, make a color. Again, I'm just gonna add my comments so you can see. This is red, this is green, this is blue. So I have 250, 234, 201. So the first red is 250, my green is 234, and this is 201. So let's gonna mix it up, make that color, pass it to update paint color, and we're gonna call it peach. So let's test it. Scroll my colors down. This is my little peach color. Peach. You can see it gives me that exact color and it is actually working. So now I've done four colors for you. You have six colors remaining to do. Go finish the app and then turn it in when you're done. So I finished putting in all my colors. So now let's test it. I don't want to test it on the emulator. I actually want to test it on a real device. So let's collect it using Let's View. And in scan, I'm going to type in the code T-U-V-D-O-J and press connect. So here you can see the app on my phone. Let's just test that all these works. Green, Hello. yellow, Peach, orange, orange, red, blue, lavender, white, gray, black, black, gray, white, lavender, red, orange, peach, yellow, green. So you can see all of my colors are working. Um, let's reset. Setting. Let's actually increase the line size to see if that still works. It's black. Orange. Orange. Yellow. Green. Blue. So you can see that works. Setting. Let's do our dot size. Increase it. There's my Orange. black. Yellow. Green. Red. Blue. Each. Setting. Let's try selecting a photo from the gallery. You can see all of this still works. Green. So that works. Let's try taking a picture. I'm going to click OK. And maybe okay. I draw. An arrow to him and increase the dot size and maybe green. I put some green dots on my shirt and draw lavender. some lavender glasses on. So there you go. One thing we did forget is the erase button. The erase button should clear all of the paint off of this. So I want to give you a hint. We're just going to clear the paint. That's really what erase is going to do. If we scroll up here, clear the paint from the canvas. Well, we're going to go to image eraser, pull in our clicked, and it's right here, canvas.clear. So let's see if this works. You can see it erases all of the paint from the current Thing. So I can actually restart and maybe do like a yellow, ye yellow glasses green. with like a green hat red. and some red polka dots on the shirt. So again, if I press erase, that is how you actually just erase the paint from the screen. If we press reset, Resetting. it clears the background and those pictures. We are done. Once you complete this assignment, don't forget to save this document and then turn it into your teacher.